when I get in front of these fish, I've had no problem hooking them on a small orange fly. Right there, fish on, right there. And we're 22 feet of water, that was 12 feet down. I only got one line in the water, so I'm gonna turn inshore and fight this fish and let Tom continue with the troll. Right there. But see the marks? Catch the fish. It's running right at me now. Stay here in 14 feet of water. Just keep the line tight. He's coming my way. He's gonna go crazy in a second. Oh, oh, we're getting to that point. He's starting to realize he didn't like the way this is going. <laughs> oh, nice big fish. Wow, he's gonna go crazy. Oh, that's a big fish. one's going home for dinner. Oh, that's a nice trout. Whew. Guys, that is just an incredible Eagle Lake rainbow. He jumped all over that 12 feet deep, right near shore. It's marking some fish. Um, I played with the depth, got it dialed in, and uh, that's the reward right there. That's what you come to Eagle Lake for, and that's why you pull trolling flies. What, what a what a beautiful fish. I'm just just blessed to catch big giant trout like this and uh, that's the nicest trout I've caught in quite. Howdy guys, Cal Kellogg here. You know what I'm doing today? I'm cutting through some of the bull that seems to be circulating around trolling flies for trout. I'm gonna cut through some of the disinformation that's out there and I'm gonna set the record straight before I do that, I want to announce that I got a couple new sets of flies debuting today in the fishhuntshoot.com store. We have our lightning flies. They're absolutely beautiful. Guy's been using them back east and they are lightning trout killers. And for the big fish guys out there, I have a three fly set. These are absolutely huge flies. They are broken back metalheads. If you like the metalhead concept, you're gonna like this big dual hook metal head. Put it in front of big fish, big trout, take it to Pyramid, smash the barbs down, take it to Elmanor, anywhere big trout swim, put this big fly in the water and you got a really good chance of hooking a trophy. Let me get rid of my uh, my bull cutting tool here, my, my Husqvarna um, axe. This is actually one of my favorite axe, axes. This is a a small forestry axe. I believe it has a 27 inch handle and uh, man, that thing is just a joy to play with. Um, yes, yes, I did chop myself in the shin with this one time. So if you get an axe, be careful. Let's talk about flies. I'm gonna put this thing over here. 
so I don't cut myself on it because it is pretty sharp. So what kind of comments have I been getting about fly trolling? And, and I find these comments to be kind of funny because there's somebody out there in, in cyber world that watches me or Wes or one of our clients catch a really big trout on a fly and then they proceed to tell us, tell me, that I don't know anything about fly trolling. And uh, I think it's kind of comical, but I just want to set the record straight. I want to set you guys on, on the road to success. My, my philosophy is keep it simple and put yourself in a, in a position to catch fish and to catch big fish. So one of the first comments I've been getting, and I don't know where this is coming from. I think it may be coming from the Action Disc website. I don't know, but I have a bunch of guys. I'm gonna grab this rod right here. Here's one of my lead core rods. I'm um, having this one rigged up with a junior trolling fly. Got the Action Disc right there. Um, that is a 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader. I have a lot of guys saying, you don't wanna use fluorocarbon leaders with flies because that action disc will cause the leader to break. I almost kind of have no comment and I'll tell you why. I haven't seen that happen because I change my leaders all the time. Here's, here's a big spool of Yozuri. This is uh, this is eight pound test. I, I got a 64,000 yard spool. Actually, it's a thousand yard spool, but I get that big giant spool because I spool the line from that spool onto my smaller leader spools. I just keep refilling them because I change my leaders all the time. When I'm out on the guide boat, I'll often have multiple rods rigged up. So if I get a messed up leader on a rod out there in the heat of battle, I'll, I'll put that rod back in the, in the rack. I'll grab another rod, we'll get back to fishing. But I change my leaders almost every day. That's one of the cheapest components you're dealing with. And that's one of the best ways to ensure fishing success is always to have a fresh leader on there. And the knots, if you tie a knot and the knot's not perfect, try to say that a few times, clip it off and start again. The knots need to be perfect. The leader needs to be fresh. If there's a nick in it and you say, oh, there's a nick in it, but I think it'll be okay. You know what's gonna happen. You're gonna catch a 10 pound, hook a 10 pound trout on that pole and that leader's gonna snap. So don't do that. So I think the folks that are having trouble with the action discs when pairing them with fluorocarbon um, should really think about just changing leaders more often. Cause I can tell you there are times when if you are not running the fluorocarbon, you're not gonna get hit. So I think the, the liabilities are offset by the advantages. You can overcome the disadvantage of that action disc breaking the line by simply you know, putting on a fresh leader every single day or every time it seems worn. I mean, you can check where that action disc is working and determine, oh yeah, yeah, there's a nick there, there's a worn spot there. Put on a new leader and uh, you're not gonna have any problems. While we're on the subject of leaders, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about leaders, I have guys tell me, you know, when you're out there trolling flies, you can't use a leader heavier than four pound test. Okay, I, it, it, this is my opinion, but my opinion is based on having personally caught or been part of more trout than I can count. I think in my fishing career, 15 to 20,000 trout caught is, is not a, 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 a overestimate. It may be more than that. It, bottom line is I've caught a lot of trout. My clients have caught a lot of trout. My friends have caught a lot of trout. And I could tell you, if you're trolling around out there with a four pound leader and you got a trolling fly on, maybe you got one of my metal heads on and you're trolling 2.7 miles an hour. And that's when an eight pound fish decides to bite. You got a really good chance of losing that fish. And then you know what happens? You're gonna be talking to your buddy. Hey, Bill, you know what? I, I had a tremendous strike and the fish broke the leader. Or, hey, Bill, I had a fish right at the net and he started head shaking and he broke the leader. If you're trolling with four pound line, you're asking for trouble because you don't need to go that light. Standard leader for me is eight or 10 pound test floral. I don't really like to go up to 12. I feel that 12 is stiff enough that it impairs the action of things like flies, you know, when you're running with a disc and stuff like that. If, if you just got a mental block against, you know, using eight and 10 pound test, go down to six. I mean, that is, the lowest I am ever gonna go, and I think that's too light. Eight pound, 10 pound, it's proven, it's perfect. 
we run the light drag anyway, keep the line tight, keep a fresh leader on there, perfect knots, you're not gonna have any problem and you're not gonna miss any bites because you're using eight pound test fluorocarbon line. You're using fluorocarbon because it reflects light at the same rate as water that renders it virtually invisible to trout and other game fish. Enough said, that, that's, that's it. Trolling speed, okay? Guys are telling me, you know, you can't troll more than, uh, you can't troll more than about one mile an hour with flies or it's just, they're just not gonna work. Absolutely untrue. I think that perception came from the 1920s where fly trolling really kind of got its roots back in the Adirondacks Mountains. That's where guys started trolling streamer flies using fly gear. And guess what they were fishing out of? They were in a canoe. They're going like that. They're going like that. And of course they're going slow. They're in a canoe. Can you catch trout trolling slowly with flies? You absolutely positively can, but you can also catch trout, and you've seen it here on the channel, you can find the videos. You can catch trout going two miles an hour, three miles an hour. You could catch trout all the way up to four miles an hour because we've done it, and we've done it on video, and you could find those videos, and you could check it out for yourself, okay? Here's something that you should do for yourself when it comes to fishing. Number one principle of mine, is keep it simple, keep it simple, okay? But think out of the box, don't follow the leader. If you go to a lake and everyone is trolling big needlefish, don't do that. Put on a, a small spoon or a fly or a trout tricks worm or something else. A lot of those rules just came about because there was some guy doing some technique and he was catching fish and all of a sudden it became a rule. You can't troll a fly over one mile an hour. It's not true, guys. Get out of the box. Stop following the leader. Keep it simple, but mix it up. Unique presentations catch fish. That's why I catch so many fish on flies. Not enough guys are pulling them. That's why I catch trout on trout tricks worms. That's why my buddies up in Washington state kill the trout almost every day on trout tricks worms. They're pulling something the trout simply have not seen before. It's a lot easier to catch trout and it's a lot easier to catch big trout if you're showing them something unique, something novel, something they haven't experienced before. In our you know, urban or foothill lakes here in California, the trout have seen needlefish and castmasters and rapalas. And yes, those are outstanding lures. But if there's an eight pound trout in Lake Comanche and he was hooked on a castmaster and he got away, the chances of you hooking him again on a castmaster are pretty slim. You got a much better chance showing that fish a grub or a fly or a trout trick worm, something he hasn't seen before you got a pretty good chance. Enough said about that, don't follow the leader. Final thing I wanna talk about, I got guys that'll tell me, you should be trolling your flies behind dodgers, okay? And I also have a lot of guys that ask me, you know, can you troll flies near the surface? Can you troll flies off a downrigger? Can you troll flies off a lead core? You can troll flies anywhere in the water column at virtually any speed and on some given days you're going to have success with a combination you know that you come up with on the water i've caught fish 100 feet deep on flies at shasta my biggest ever you know quote unquote wild rainbow was at lake elmanor trolling about a foot deep a lot of times you know if uh if the water's cold i'll take one of my downrigger top line rods just like this here i'll put on just a large enough trolling weight like that, just to get it under the surface, I'll scope it out. That's a beautiful fly right there, beautiful shad imitation or a smelt imitation. I'll scope it out there and I'll catch fish right under the surface. Uh, incidentally, trolling weights are back in the store if you were looking for them. I know I had a, had a lot of guys reaching out to us looking for them, they're back in the store. But anyway, I'll put that trolling weight on there, scope it out, fish right under the surface and catch fish. At other times when you know I wanna play with depths, I'll run off one of my, my yellow lead core rods. This is my favorite tool for fly trolling when the water's cold because I can change depths really well. Um, you know me, I love this rod. I designed the rod, I designed the system, the hybrid lead core concept is mine. 
It's awesome. It's a beautiful setup, just the way it works. Um, I, I, I just can't tell you how many big fish we use, use you know, pulling this setup with flies and with other offerings too, but that's my number one favorite way to pull a fly. But, you know, hey, I'm prejudiced. I came up with the rig. But, you know, I, we pull them off downriggers. We pull them wherever we think there are fish that are in the mindset to feed. That's where we pull them. Now, let's talk about that dodger for a second. Guy says, well, you know, you're just not going to attract fish in big water unless you got a dodger out there. Now, think about this. Let's be logical, all right? When, when you and I think about a trout, we think of a pretty fish that fights well, doesn't have spines, and, and they're pretty good for dinner, okay? Trout, if you were a shad or you were, say, a caddisfly or a mayfly, you would have a different perception of a rainbow trout. They are savage bloodthirsty apex predators they are the masters of their environment they would eat you if they got a chance they will find you and they will eat you shad pond smelt in the wild they're not cruising around with a dodger caddisflies and mayflies are not floating around with a dodger the trout find them they have a lateral line down their side nerve rich tissue water is a great conductor of sound and vibration they have that sense we don't have it if i was a trout i would know there's a minnow over there i would feel it i would know it they know it apex predators their business is finding small offerings out in streams in open water wherever they live wherever they swim remember that action disc look at that action disc look at the cup on that you know, that thing displaces a ton of water. And when you pull it through the water, the vibration it adds to the fly is just tremendous. Now, sometimes I do pair flies with dodgers, but 90% of the time I'm trolling them naked. I'm running an eight to 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader that's anywhere from 36 to about 48 inches long. I'm keeping it fresh. I'm double, triple checking the knots. I'm checking it all day long for nicks. That's how I'm pulling it, and the trout are finding it. They're finding it in open water. They're finding it in deep water. They were finding it at Collins Lake last year when the water was just horrendously muddy. Muddier water than I've ever successfully trolled for trout in. I was guiding, I had no choice, and I found out real fast, I could catch those trout in muddy water because they rely on that lateral line to zero in on the fly. That's all I got to say for now. If you want to check out my new fly sets, if you've got a hankering for a lead core rod or a trolling rod, trolling sinkers, all that stuff and more, you're going to find it at fishhuntshoot.com. I hope I've cleared up some of the misinformation surrounding fly trolling. I, uh, I don't like to toot my own horn, but I consider myself a fly trolling expert at this point, and it is one of the most effective offerings you can pull when you're out looking for trout. They will help you catch more and bigger fish. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for all the support. I'm Kel Kellogg.